Hi everyone, I'm Mark Dijker, developer advocate at Diagrid, where we enable developers to build and run high-scale modern applications using open source technology such as Dapper. In this video, I'm looking at creating Dapper pluggable components using the .NET SDK. Dapper comes with over 100 built-in components to connect with state stores, secret stores, pop-up brokers, bindings, etc. But if you want to create something custom for your specific needs, then you can create a pluggable component. Since Depper release 1.10, there are SDKs available that make it easier to create pluggable components. So what I will show in this video is how this pluggable component is made. And I'll do a test by making some HTTP requests to the Depper runtime, which then goes through our pluggable component and then interacts with a Superbase table. So let's have a look at the code. So we're now in VS Code. I've cloned the GitHub repo locally. When you do the same thing and you open this folder in VS Code, you'll be asked to install a couple of extensions and please do that. And one of the extensions is called CoTour and that's what I'm gonna use right now to give a short guided tour through the solution. Let's have a look at the prerequisites first. So this is built using the .NET 7 SDK. We need the Depper CLI to actually test this. In this case, we're connected to Superbase. So you also need a Superbase account, which you can sign up for free. And you either need to run this on macOS, Linux, or WSL on Windows. So the solution is in source Depper pluggable Superbase. As you can see, this is a web application. It's using .NET 7. And here are the only two packages added as references. It's the Depper pluggable component ASP.NET Core and the Superbase C Sharp. Okay, let's have a look at the model that we are storing in Superbase. So in this case, we are using Superbase tables and those are based on Postgres. And by using the Superbase library, we can create models and inherit from a base model. And then we can use attributes as, as decorators to indicate what is the table name that we want to store our data in and what's the primary key there and what are all of our columns. In this case, we make some kind of a mapping because we're using the Depper State Management API, which is basically like a key value store. That's also why I just have like two columns here, one column for the key and one column for the value. Uh, the other two columns are already created out of the box when you create a table in Superbase. All right, so let's move, move over to the Superbase State Store class. So this class, Superbase State Store, inherits from iStateStore, and that's the interface that all of the Dapper State Stores will, uh, will implement. And then you need to implement uh, three methods. So there's the delete one to delete a key value pair. And there is a get one to retrieve the key value pair. And there is the set one to save or set a key value pair. So all of them um, use the Superbase clients to interact with uh, the Superbase table. Uh, and you can see that they all interact with this uh, key value class as well, which we defined ourselves. That Superbase client needs to be instantiated, and that happens in the init async method. That's also a method that you have to implement uh, because the iStateStore inherits from iPluggable component, and all components need to be initialized. So the init async method will be called when uh, Depper will initialize, and it will check all of the components that are present in components or resources folder. So when this init async method is called, it will receive a metadata request and that metadata request contains some properties and you can use these properties to set up the connection. So in this case, I am expecting a project URL and I'm expecting a project API key. And these come from the component file that we need to specify in the next step. In this case, I want to make sure that these values are set because otherwise we cannot create a connection with Superbase. So that's why I'm doing the try get value and throwing an invalid operation exception when they are missing. So in case they are uh, both there, we can create a new uh, instance of the Superbase client and then we need to call initialize async on this client. So at this moment, uh, Superbase is up and running and we can uh, interact with the Superbase table. Now, as I mentioned, there is a component file because Dapper works with component files that contains the specification of the uh, components. Component files you need for all of the built-in components, but also for your pluggable components. So there's always a metadata name involved. And so this is an identifier for this component. And another part that's very important is the uh, specification type. In this case, it's a state store component. So we start with state and we need to use a name of the socket that is used for communication. In this case, it's Superbase, and this will match with another value that we will see in the next step. 
Here you see the metadata values that are uh, used. So we need a project URL value and we need a project API key value. Now, although this file is here, this file needs to be present when you actually want to host Blockbond component somewhere. Uh, in this case, I'm running locally. So this file needs to be present on my uh, local machine in a .depper folder. So I've done this already. So here at the bottom of my terminal, you can see the .depper slash components folder. And that contains the pluggable superdays uh, file. So if we briefly look at that, we can see here that this contains the same YAML as we've seen before. So it's the pluggable superbase name, uh, state superbase, and then here's the actual project URL and the project API key, which I now need to reset before you use it. Now let's have a look at the C Sharp side again. So this is the program CS file, uh, the startup. So this is using the Depper pluggable components SDK. And we are defining an application here by using the Depper pluggable components application class and creating that. And what we then need to do is we need to register uh, the servers we created. So in this case, we created a super-based state store. Uh, so we are registering that. And this first part here, this is the socket name that you want to communicate over. So this also needs to match with the second part of the type in the component file. All right, so now it's time to run this. So we have the component file in a dry spot locally. Uh, let's now also build and run our pluggable component application. So that might run here. So this is all working. The final step is running the Depper process. And because what we're going to do to test this solution is we're going to make some HTTP calls against this Depper process. And Depper itself will know where Superbase is because of the Superbase component file. So let's run this as well. So now Depper is uh, starting up and Depper should have detected now that we have a Superbase component. So let's do a quick quick peek here in the logs. And yes, there was a pluggable component Superbase was successfully registered. And we can see that the component is loaded. So uh, the Superbase component should be available uh, so we can interact with it. All right. So the final part is now making some HTTP requests using the state management API uh, and that looks like this. So we can do a post to the, our local URL. We have Depper running and it's listening on, on, on this port and we want to use the state management API and we want to talk to this state component. And we're going to do a post and we're going to post this key value pair. So it will be a key which is called key one um, and with the value this is stored in Superbase. So now is also a good moment to check if anything is already present in the Superbase. Okay, so this is our uh, table, Depper state store, with all of our columns, but we don't have any uh, data here. All right, now we're ready to make this request and store some data in Superbase. I'm gonna hit this send request button and then the output will appear here on the right. Send request. We get a two or four no content back, which is uh, which is good, which indicates that it uh, that it should work. So let's move back to Superbase to see if the data is there. And yes, we have a key and a value here. This is stored in Superbase. And as you can see, the key is a combination of the uh, Dapper app ID, which is called my app, and then the key itself. So this worked perfect. Now, if you need more information, I definitely recommend you to have a look at this blog post uh, because it contains a lot more information. It also contains the link to uh, this repo, the Depper Pluggable Component Superbase in the Diagrid Labs. It contains all of the source code. So definitely have a look uh, in here, even if you plan to make something else not based on Superbase, but uh, I think it's just a nice example of how you can use the Depper.net SDK for pluggable components. So if you have any questions or comments about pluggable components or this example in specific, uh, feel free to join our Depper Discord. The link's in the description. There's a dedicated channel called Pluggable Components. So feel free to ask your questions there. Until next time.